Welcome to the Critical Chain Project Planning Workshop. This is an introductory course for users who are new to the Concerto Critical Chain client and users familiar with Concerto who want to learn more about the new interface and features available in Concerto Critical Chain 5.0. In today's workshop, I'll take you through planning a new project using the Concerto software. The topics we'll be covering are Critical Chain Solution and Concerto Software Overview, Critical Chain Planning with Concerto and MS Project, Validating the Project Network, Analyzing the Critical Chain. The Critical Chain Solution is used in multi-project environments to reverse the delays caused by following traditional rules of project management and execution. In a multi-project environment, the critical chain solution consists of three parts. First, projects are converted to critical chain format where the longest resource dependent path is identified. Task durations are cut for aggressive task estimates and buffers are added to protect the critical chain. This process removes local and hidden safeties from tasks across the board and puts the safety in the buffers where it belongs. Second, projects are staggered in the pipeline in order to establish release mechanisms. Having a release mechanism prevents projects from being started as soon as possible and controls the flow of work in process or WIP so that all projects can finish faster. Third, tasks are buffered on a daily basis Buffer management updates the buffers and due dates based on task progress. Hence, the relative priorities for tasks are now determined by the amount of buffer consumed. This way, a resource has a very clear priority when conflicting situations arise. In this workshop, we'll be discussing only the first part of the critical chain solution, creating a critical chain project plan using the Concerto Critical Chain Client. There are three key characteristics to a critical chain project. First, tasks in a project should be modeled with the right level of detail to provide clear priorities. Here are some guidelines. Limit the number of tasks to 300 tasks per project. The task duration should be no less than one day and no more than one week. Tasks represent groups of work. A task should not be broken into several tasks just because it requires different resources for different durations of time. However, it should be broken for specific key resource types, in which case a separate task should be defined with that resource assigned over most of the task duration. Next, a project needs to be made with aggressive cycle times and buffers. Our field implementation experience has shown that after the project network is built, the overall cycle time can be halved. This is done by making all tasks 50% of their original duration, shortening the chain length. Then add buffers that are sized at 50% of the shortened chain length and placed at the end of the chain, resulting in a project duration that's 75 percent of the original size. Lastly, after identifying the critical chain, if the critical chain is longer than the critical path, it indicates that there is a resource contention within the network. It is possible to minimize the cycle time and achieve the equality between the critical chain and critical path by increasing the most loaded resource. Later in this workshop, you'll learn how to identify possibilities for further reducing the cycle time and about trade-offs required in doing so. When talking about the Concerto system, there are three main components of the Concerto software that correspond to the three parts of the critical chain solution in a multi-project environment. First, 
Concerto Critical Chain Client enables a single project critical chain scheduling. That is, identifying the critical chain in the project network, adding buffers, performing global task duration reduction to exact hidden local safeties, and analyzing the critical chain project network to identify areas that can be improved to achieve a shorter cycle time. Secondly, Concerto Pipeline Client performs multi-project scheduling and synchronization. That is, releases projects based on availability of the selected constraint. Typically the constraint is the resource with the highest load across all project in the organization. Lastly, Concerto Web provides accurate task priorities across all projects that are determined by the buffer consumption that is calculated during daily buffer management runs. The next topic we'll cover is how to use Concerto Critical Chain Client with Microsoft Project to create a new project network. The Concerto Critical Chain Client integrates seamlessly with Microsoft Project. In this segment, we'll discuss how to set MS Project options for Concerto, how to set up the project calendar, and how to use Concerto Gantt and Concerto Resource Views in MS Project. In addition, we'll cover where to find the critical chain analysis and visualization tools, as well as how to validate a project network before converting it to critical chain format. First, before you create a new plan or open a non-concerto project network, you need to set the MS project options so that the project network conforms to the concerto software. To do this, on the Microsoft Project menu, under Concerto, click on Set MS Project Options for Concerto. This is a macro that will change the required settings to those shown on the next few slides. Microsoft Project Scheduling Settings that are changed by running the Set MS Project Settings for Concerto macro are seen here. Note, not all settings require changes. You can also change these settings manually using Microsoft Project Tools and Options. Remember the following required settings. 1. Task type must be Fixed Units. 2. Uncheck New Tasks are Effort Driven. 3. Uncheck Split in Progress Tasks. 4. Check Tasks are always on or their constraint dates. Microsoft Project's calculation settings will also be changed when this macro is run. The required settings are 1. Calculation mode set to automatic. 2. Updating task status updates resource status. Option is checked. When MS Project settings are done, you're ready to create your project network. Before you create tasks and add activity dependency links, you need to first create the resource sheet. The resource sheet enables Concerto to use what resources you have available for task assignments. A simple rule when creating a resource sheet for your project is that resources should be based on skill sets, not on named resources. Skill sets are logical resources like software engineer or diagnostic engineer. Named resources are physical resources such as John Doe or Mary Jones. 
The basic idea of constructing a resource sheet based on skill sets is to maximize resource pooling opportunities to increase the flexibility of execution. On the Concerto resource sheet, there are three required fields. They are the resource name, the group, the maximum units for a given resource. As an example, suppose there are two units, or 200% of engineering resources available. Under this, we have software engineer with one unit, and hardware engineer with one unit. In this case, we have three different types of resources. Why do we construct resource sheets with hierarchies like this? Consider a situation where there is an engineering task that can be performed by either a software or hardware engineer. In this case, the task can be assigned to engineering. This increases pooling opportunities for the software or hardware engineer when there are conflicting tasks and it allows tasks to be performed in parallel. Concerto also allows setting custom calendars for both project and individual resource calendars. You can specify company holidays, working hours, a resource's non-working days, or non-default working time. Concerto Critical Chain will take all calendar information into account when calculating a task start and finish time. Now, we'll use the Concerto Gantt view in Microsoft Project to create the project network. Creating a project network is simple, as there are only five required fields that you need to fill in. One, task name, this is the task description. 2. Duration. This is the estimated amount of time the resource is required to complete the task. 3. Resource. The resource needed for the task. At least one resource must be assigned. 4. Activity dependencies. This includes a predecessor task ID in the predecessor field and a successor task ID in the successors field. All tasks except the project end and contractual milestone tasks must have a successor task. All projects must have a due date. The place to set or change the due date is under Microsoft Projects project menu in the project information window. Specify the finish date that you expect the project to complete. When critical chain and buffer management is run, this date will be used to calculate the buffer consumption. The Concerto critical chain client window opens above the Microsoft project window. There are two toolbars with tools arranged according to what is being done. One, planning a new project, or two, replanning a project already in progress. There are two buttons on the toolbar, P for planning, or R for replanning. Clicks on either button will toggle the functional buttons that follow. Today, we'll focus on how to use the planning functions. Select the planning toolbar to create a new project, then click on the new project icon. Or you can open a pre-existing project and convert it to a Concerto Critical Chain Project Network. To do this, click the open icon, then browse to and select the existing project and click open. After you've created your project network in Microsoft Project, the next step is to validate it to ensure there are no errors 
or non-conforming settings. Here is a list of concerto validation rules. Projects are scheduled from the project end date. Concerto schedules tasks based on the task start as late as possible algorithm. Tasks are not effort driven and all tasks must have at least one resource assigned. Task types must be fixed units, not fixed duration. All dependencies are finished to start. Project end and contractual milestones have no successors. All other tasks must have successors. Contractual milestones must have only one predecessor. Number of resource assigned to a task must be less than or equal to the maximum units of the resource as per the concerto resources sheet. Every task has a resource assignment. Fractional unit assignments are allowed in 0 0.05 unit increments. However, this is not recommended because it implies multitasking. There should be no duplicate resources in the Concerto Resources Sheet. To validate a project network, simply click the Validate Network icon button. You can also select it from the Plan, Replan menu. If there are warnings or errors, validation will prompt you for corrections. A warning message does not require immediate action. However, error messages will cause the validation to fail and require that you fix the errors, such as a missing resource assignment for a task. Next, prior to converting your project network into critical chain plan, there are some scheduling parameters that need to be set. Click the CC Parameters icon to open the CC Parameters dialog for the following. The first field is for specifying the size of the CCCB or the project buffer that will be added to the end of the project. This buffer needs to be to a recommended size of 50% of the project's length. For example, if Concerto calculates a critical chain of 100 days, a 50% CCCB will add 50 days at the end of the project, so the overall project length would be 150 days. Next is the CCFB field. This is the feeding buffer size that will be inserted between the feeding tasks and the critical chain task at the integration point. The feeding buffer is determined by the length of the feeding chain. Last is the CMSB field. This is the contractual milestone buffer size that gets added for each contractual milestone you have in the project network. The contractual milestone buffers protect important milestones from uncertainties. As for buffer size, we recommend 50% of your project cycle time in all projects for all customers. Based on the best performance from our vast field of implementation experiences, this percentage produces the best performance. With the addition of a 50% buffer on top of the existing project cycle time, your due date will most likely won't be met, but do not fear. At this point, what you need to do is to trim all task durations based on aggressive estimates using duration reduction. This duration reduction extracts local hidden safeties on task levels. The recommended cycle time reduction is 50%. With 50% buffer size, the new length of the critical chain project 
will be 75% of the original project length before the duration reduction. If you were to trim the duration by only 33% and had a 50% buffer, you would end up with a critical chain project length the same as your original unbuffered project. Now click on the Advanced button at the bottom of the screen and find the Feeding Buffer Policy. The default setting is Push Out Due Dates. This setting will give you the biggest feeding chain projection with a full unconsumed feeding buffer. However, inserting a feeding buffer may cause slack on critical chain, hence unnecessary increases in the project cycle time. The other way to go is to select Consume Feeding Buffers. When this option is set and Concerto is converting the pro project network to a critical chain network, if any slack caused by feeding buffer insertion is encountered, the slack will be artificially lessened by consuming the feeding buffers to close the gap. You'll be able to see this in the demo we do in a few minutes. As you can see, by clicking on Identify Critical Chain, the network has turned into quite a colorful scheme. First, Notice the red tasks. These are critical chain tasks and they represent the longest activity and resource dependent chain that defines the cycle time for the network. Blue tasks are non-critical chain tasks. At the integration points between the blue and red task you can see green feeding buffers in between. These feeding buffers protect the critical chain from delays on the feeding chain so that any delays in the feeding chain do not cause the critical chain. In many situations, if a project is long and it requires multiple phases to be completed, there will be milestones that are tied to payments based on contractual agreements. We call these milestones contractual milestones you can add a contractual milestone to a project network and Concerto can assign a contractual milestone buffer or contractual milestone buffer. These buffers are shown in cyan color and they protect the delivery date for the contractual milestone from its chain of tasks. Lastly, all tasks converge at the project end and project buffer. The project buffer has a magenta color. The project buffer is a critical chain plan serving two purposes. First, it aggregates hidden local safeties in a visible buffer to cushion uncertainties. Secondly, it is used as a measure in determining task priority. After Concerto gives you a remake of your project network, you'll need to analyze the network and possibly do some final touch-up to ensure it meets your goals. Before we move on to analyzing the plan, I'd like to go over some of the common tools that we use for analyzing the network. Analyzing a project network is made simple by using the analysis tools under the Concerto menu. Some of the commonly used tools have matching icons on the toolbar in MS Project. The analysis tools can be used to filter out the critical chain in a complex network of chains, identify slack caused by feeding buffers, see what chain is causing the most penetration, and so on. Here's a list of commonly used analysis and visualization tools. Here are the toolbar icons for Filter for Critical Chain, Reset Display, Go to Selected Task, Auto Filter, and Zoom In and Zoom Out. 
We'll demonstrate using some of these tools during the next couple of slides. After Identify Critical Chain is run, your project network is critical chain ready. Click on Critical Chain Summary to see the results. First, Critical Path Duration. This is the shortest path possible without considering resource contention. If your critical chain duration is not the same as critical path duration, it implies there's a resource shortage. Secondly, project length is the sum of critical chain duration plus project buffer plus slack and calendar gap. If there's slack and calendar gap, your project length is lengthened unnecessarily and there's room to improve to shorten your cycle time. The goal, if possible, is to tune the network so that critical chain duration is the same as critical path and with no slack and no calendar gaps. If there are no contractual milestones, there'll be only one line for a project the status of the project due date. If something shows up in red, it means your target finish date cannot be met. Later, the purpose of the analysis will be to try to compress the schedule so the cycle time can be met. Remember, you won't know if you can meet a project due date until you've exhausted all possibilities for fine-tuning the project such as eliminating resource contention, slack, calendar gap, and done aggressive duration estimation with cycle time reduction across the board. Although having your plan meeting a due date needs to be the goal, you shouldn't try to meet the due date during planning and analysis. What you should try to be trying to do is to accomplish the shortest most reasonable cycle time given the project requirements and resources available without compromising on budget, scope, or of course project quality and safety. At this point, after seeing the critical chain summary, the questions you need to ask yourself are Is the cycle time acceptable? Is critical chain length different from critical path length? Can we meet the project due date? Can we meet the milestone due dates? In this example, critical path is 24 days and critical chain duration is 27 days. Let's investigate resource shortage by clicking on the resource contention tab. Each line on the Resource Contention tab indicates the amount of critical chain length that is contributed by that resource. In the above example, Concerto has identified the software engineer as the limited resource. Notice the blue number indicating a hyperlinked task ID. When you click, it'll take you to the tasks that use this resource. Remember, this is resource contention on the critical chain only. Concerto won't display feeding chains that have resource contention. Simply, the critical chain is the longest chain, and it's the critical chain that determines the overall cycle time. At this point, you'll need to ask yourself these two questions. Can we increase the constrained resources maximum units? Can we assign the task with a different resource or its parent resource? Assuming that you can increase the software engineer's maximum units from 1 to 2 on the Concerto resource sheet and rerun Identify Critical Chain you might get critical chain duration to match critical path duration. Sometimes, however, it's not possible to increase a resource to shorten the cycle time. 
you might have to live with what you have. At least, the possibility of shorter cycle time is identified by Concerto, so you know it. Next, let's deal with slack. Slack is a time gap in critical chain, created when a feeding buffer is inserted between parallel critical chain tasks and feeding chain tasks, sharing the same predecessor and successor. As you can see in this example, the feeding buffer causes the feeding chain to elongate. Hence, the critical chain task is pushed out in order to accommodate both the feeding task and feeding buffer. In the critical chain summary, it indicates that there are two days of slack. Under the slack tab, critical chain tasks are identified. By removing the slack, you can effectively shorten the length of the critical chain. You can do it at the expense of making available feeding buffers smaller. Here are the steps. When there are discrepancies between the project calendar and resource calendar over the task duration, calendar gap will elongate the critical chain. For example, suppose the project calendar has five days per week, but the resource can only work on two days of the same week. Then the calendar would be the difference between project calendar and resources available work days. That is five minus two equals three days. Assuming we can eliminate all the de deficiencies in the project network by removing slack, removing calendar gap, and increasing resource level to accommodate resource contention. Ask yourself if you can match critical chain to critical path after rerunning Identify Critical Chain. Assuming you can meet your target date after all the improvements, what's next? If you'd like to use the example project network used in this workshop, and try for yourself, please send an email to us at support at realization.com. Next, you need to accept the due date by clicking on Accept Plan. This will change the finish date in your project to the target date calculated by Concerto, as shown. You can also check the two boxes below to save your original due date in Date 8, Column, and save a baseline of all tasks for future reference. Lastly, you're ready to export your project file to MPD format and upload it to the Concerto database for execution. Click on the Export Project button, and it will prompt you to save the project file in MPD format on your local computer. Remember, Concerto Web Only accepts project plans in MPD format, not MPP. So there you have it. We have reached the end of today's basic critical chain project planning workshop for new projects. I'd like to thank you for attending today's workshop. If you'd like to obtain a copy of today's presentation, please contact us via email at support at realization.com. If you have any questions about using Concerto Critical Chain, you can call us at this number, 